Hey, Wolf Pack, Angela Wolf here behind the scenes, and I it will be a short show today because I don't want you to miss all the activities going on over at sewingmachinesplus.com because I think the giveaways start in... Oh, we got a little while. We got a little while. So I, it's so nice to see you all. I'm Angela Wolf. for those that don't know me. And we are sewing along with the Chloe Trench. I'm still embroidering. I'm onto my sex, actually my third section of embroidery. If you watched last week's show, you probably realize I was not happy with one line of embroidery. So, hey, Zena, I have a question. Was that you, by the way? Did you win yesterday? Were you one of the ones that won? Or are there two Zenas? I just got to know because I was so excited to hear your name. All right. So we are live streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. I'm so excited to see you all today. I'm sewing a fabulous jacket for fall. But Pamela sent me a message and she said, hey, uh, I love your Kate skirt. I think I'm going to make a Kate skirt to go with my Chloe trench. And I thought, hey, 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 I've got some plaid fabric. That's what we're going to cut today. I'm going to show you how to cut not really a plaid it's more of like a hound's tooth i'm going to show you how to cut out a jacket and line up your pattern pieces there's nothing worse than having your hem maybe this is that part of the plaid and then another part of your hem is here it has to line up or it'll drive me nuts <laughs> so i'm going to show you how it's easy easy peasy to line up your pattern pieces and cut them out like this so I'm embroidering some more. We're going to take a look at that. I'm going to show you something I did because it was really hard to line up this pattern continuously on the thin piece of tool when I went to rehoop. So I'll give you some solutions for that. In the meantime, say hi, say where you're from. And at the very end today, uh, we've got a winner for Couture Collection number two. Now, if you purchased the collection in the last two weeks since we started this, if you won, you just get a refund. How's that? If you didn't, you just win it. So the embroidery will work on any machine. Uh, I'm using the Brother Machines, of course, as a Brother Brand Ambassador. So let's go back and take a quick look at the embroidery first. All right, so this is what I've got so far. I'll just slide this out of the hoop so you can see. And then I'll slide her back in. All right, so see all this? I've already finished this whole section here. See how I added? So this will go right along the center front of the jacket and then extend out. And then I swapped the colors. So it was black on the inside here. I swapped it to blue and black just to kind of mix it up a little bit. I still might add more to this outside edge, but for now I'll do this part. I'm doing a whole second section. It's embroidering down here. I'll show you on the screen. Uh, but this is the part here because tool fabric's really thin and can move around a lot. But when I was trying to line up, let me show you the lines I was trying to line up. Put that back in place. If you look on the screen, right here, when I was trying to line all of these top edges, even if I turned them like just one degree, they were not all lining up. I could get this side lined up. And then these over here, they were off by... Just a itsy bitsy bit. Well, an itsy bitsy bit is not what I want. So instead, I slid the design down. So let me take you back to the screen here, actually. I slid this whole section down about an inch. So there will be a one inch spacing between the first section and this section. I'm going to need about three hoopings to be able to do the whole front of my Chloe trench. And if you missed last week's episode, you can go back. Oops, sorry about the blinky. Uh, you can go back and see that. So I'm going to just keep embroidering this. It embroiders in the order that I put these in. So uh, it has a long ways to go. So I'm just going to continue embroidering these. I'm going to make a super long line. I told you I'd cut a long piece of stabilizer. I had cut a long piece of tool. And I'm just going to keep the line going. I'm going to leave a one inch space in between the big sections. And you'll see when I go to attach this to the jacket. Now, ideally, it'd be really nice to have one long one. But I just could not line up all those together. And I really didn't feel like rehooping for each individual line. Call me lazy. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to get it done. So I left a space. But you'll see that when I go to free motion this onto the jacket, 
it won't matter because I'll be able to lower, layer that tulle fabric and you'll never notice where the break is versus if I embroidered it and it was off, which would definitely show. All right. Okay. So I have my fabric laid out all ready for you. Let's see, here's the, uh, I'll keep the embroidery up there for a sec so you can see that. Hey, Susan, nice to see you. Win thanked all of you, by the way. All of you made him such a warm birthday welcome. He didn't know I posted the photo, and like my phone's just going off nonstop with all of you wishing him happy birthday. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We just had a nice little party at the house. Just a couple friends sat outside had a fire, a bonfire, and Wynn used one of my newspapers because he couldn't get the fire going, which is a total no-no because number one, I hadn't read it yet. Number two, what happens when the wind blows and you have put um, newspaper into a bonfire? I end up with white flecks all over, every, we all had white flecks all over our hair. So we're not sure if we burnt any hairs off. <laughs> I'm hoping not, I'm hoping not. Oh, Zena, it was you. So everyone, we gotta give good luck to Zena. She's one of the five finalists and maybe some of you will be too on Sewing Machines Plus. Don't forget they're on all week and I am too. But I had to take a break to come over and see you guys on our personal Keep Our Jackets Rolling. I also have a couple news pieces for you. So our, we have a fabric stash sale planned for Monday. I'm moving it a little bit earlier. I've got three fabulous girls. Uh, they're all in high school. They're going to be here helping me, but they have a program they have to go to at three. So I'm moving the sale to two o'clock, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll send out another newsletter for that. You have to download the app, Angela Wolf app on your phone. That's the fastest way to order. And I will leave a link. I will send a whole newsletter out, probably go out tomorrow morning as a reminder. Make sure if you've never purchased on this uh, way I do my fabric stash sales, it will be live streaming on the app, on the comments old website, and it will also be in the Angela Wolf Patterns Facebook group. So not the Fashion Sewing Club one, but the Angela Wolf Patterns. So not just right here. So if you have any questions, you can email me. I just want to make sure it's going to be a lot of fun. I have, I think, think 35 bolts of fabric. We've got a lot of fleece, faux suede, some ponty knit that is to die for. Now, I will tell you though, those that are coming to my class, I've got a class in two weeks. There's still a spot open, one opened up for you if you'd like to come. Uh, you can email me if you want details, but then it's closing at the end of this week. We might just have a little smaller class and quite quaint, but a couple people couldn't make it because of unforeseen circumstances, which is totally, you know, life happens. But there's also a class in October that's full. They are getting first preview of all this fabric. So I will be doing a quick video, dropping it into the class. And if they want to order something, they can email me and they will get to keep this fabric first because it's for the class. Faux suede, we're doing quilting. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to have like the best fleece wardrobe at the end of this fleece, ponty knit, comfortable, classy, adding a touch of couture. <laughs> all right, let's go take a look at the fabric and I'm going to show you how to cut this. I think it looks like we're still embroidering. I can see that just fine here. And let's go to the fabric. And it's, by the way, it's great to see you all. Great to see you all uh, over here. Huntington Beach, I love Huntington Beach. All right, let me just take this down so you guys can read. And I'm just gonna give you some quick tips for lining up. Now you can see that plaid, okay, can't you? I'm just going to make sure before I go if I need to make it any lighter. Just leave me a comment. Can you see that that plaid well enough or do I need to make the camera lighter? I can never tell how you can see it. <laughs> oh, thanks, Susan. You're always a great help. All right. Can you see okay? Uh, can you show? Let me just see. Can you show a sleeve? Yeah, I'm gonna be cutting that out too. Good? No, you can't see it? You want a little lighter? Bye Mel. Okay, some say it looks good. Let me see, Phyllis, it's good. All right, most of you say it's good, so I'm just gonna go with that because if I make it too light, it's ridiculous. So let's go back over to the fabric and we'll just make it work. Oh, thanks, Joanna. I just got your email, too. I'll be replying to you soon. 
Okay, so let me go back over here. Now, I'm not going to use a rotary cutter right now for this. I'm going to use scissors. I'm going to use, I should say. I've got some pattern weights. And I'm going to walk. I'm over on, this is like the other side of my studio, so i got to walk around the table. So hold tight for a sec. I'd tell you a squirrel joke or something, but I can't. Okay. But you all would love this. Guess who called Wynn and wished him happy birthday? Yep. A lot of my nieces and nephews, and as loud as can be, they're like, hey, Uncle Buck. <laughs> happy birthday, Uncle Buck. Oh, you just have to love it. Okay. So if you look closely on this fabric, you see if this is better. Yeah, I think that's better. How about like that? Maybe. I got my daylight stuff. I'm just trying to get them to go the right angle. Here we go. And right here. So I have rows of black. You can kind of see the black and the navy. And then rows going this way. So a couple of things I'm going to want to keep in mind. The center front needs to match. So if this is going to be the center front this way with this black section here, then I'm going to need to use the same black section for this side. So you're going to you're not going to save a lot of fabric. You're going to actually waste a little bit because you it's more important to line up these lines than it is to save fabric. Make sense? All right. So I'm going to start with the center back. Let me see if this will all fit. It's a pretty wide piece of fabric. So if I put the center back right down the center of this line here, I know that both sides are gonna match up. Now what about the bottom hem? Well, if I'm going to line it up at the very bottom of this section here, that's kind of easy to line up. But then when I go to hem it, I'm going to only have like a little portion of that. Is that what I want? Or do I want something like this at the bottom that doesn't have the plaid section? Well, it's, I would probably say, <laughs> my vote would be to measure down just a little bit because the hem goes on a curve and it would be very obvious if this was crooked. Do you know what I mean? So I'm gonna vote for, for that. I'm gonna go, I've already cut it. So I've already added, oh gosh, how many inches here? Looks like about one, two, three, about four inches to the bottom of that. I just have to make sure that my hem matches up all the way across. I can't have four inches here and five inches here and four inches here. So one way to do that is to grab a quilter's ruler and give yourself some chalk marks. So hold on one sec, my chalk, I just stepped on it. <laughs> oh, don't you love it? Okay, chalk number two. Oh, that's all right. It wouldn't be the first, and it definitely won't be the last piece I step on. And I'll just use one of my cutting guides to use this. All right. Like I never stepped on it, we're going to start right over. And uh, if I lose my sound or anything, if my batteries go out, just send me a quick message and I can fix that. All right. So. I love these rulers not only for cutting, but for marking as well. So if I, this is a three and a half inch. If I line it up right on, I'm gonna write it on the top of this bottom section here. Number one, I can make sure that the fabric is straight. And then I'm just gonna give myself a little chalk guide Now I know that, see how that was a little bit crooked? It's not anymore. That's where my hem will be based. All right, so I have, am I missing a piece? No, I have my center front, my side front and my front and my back. And I've already done the full bust adjustment on mine. We've done that in a previous episode if you missed that. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So. One, two, three, four. This is the center, right in between this tweed.
that's going to be my center guide. So either that will be my center back. Let me just see if I have enough room. If this is my center back, I have the pattern where I'm cutting this on the fold. I'm going to continue this chalk mark up. You stare at this plaid mark long enough, it'll make you crazy dizzy. All right, there we go. How's that for a nice straight line? <laughs> okay. And I'm not sure if you're going to see, I'm trying to see if you can see that way better or this way. So why don't I go ahead and continue this down? Because when I go to cut this, it has to be cutting the whole thing, not cutting part of it and then coming back. I'll forget where I was and I'll cut something wrong. All right, so if this is the center back, I'm just flipping it over. I'm only cutting one layer. If you ever have a plaid or a print or anything that you have to line up something really straight or really accurate, I would highly recommend cutting it in a fashion that one layer, not two. There's my side front. Now you have to keep in mind your grain line. So I can't just like slide this in place. And let's see if we have enough room for all of this. I don't know if we do or not. Might have to cut. Nope. Just barely. Oh, nope. I lose my front back here. So plan B. I'm going to start at the side over here. If I slide this up, I'm going to slide this your way just a little bit so you can see this. Make sure that it's nice and straight. Okay. I'm going to do the side, front, front, side. So I'm going to line up the front because I have all that beautiful embroidery to go here. I think I'm going to line up this center front line here right along the edge of this section. Because there is a little bit of a seam allowance there. And that way I don't have to worry if for any reason I sew crooked, which of course I would never do. <laughs> as long as you don't have a lot of these lines right on the edge of your fabric, you won't notice. So kind of my little tip and trick if you're a perfectionist and you're like, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, you can. So there's the front. Now I will line up this piece here, checking my grain line, lining up my bottom with this marking that I have here and lining up my grain line. Looks good there. I could even butt this over just a little bit. So let's see if that lines up. Nope, it's a little off, a little crooked. Here we go. So that is, I can monopolize on keeping the fabric really close at the bottom. I'll cut both of these pieces out. Then I will move the fabric and I can, I don't think the back, let me see if the back will fit here. The back will actually fit here because of the way we've changed the angle of all the patterns, if I decide I want a center back seam. So keep that in mind if you're, if you're low on fabric. Uh, the, this pattern has where you fold it back if you're gonna put it on uh, the fold, and this is if you want a seam. So if I decide, you know what, if I can't fit my sleeves in this section, I don't wanna waste too much fabric, I might do that. But for now, I'll just leave it to the side. And I have two cutting mats under here, so I just have to be careful how I cut on here to make sure I don't. It's a weird angle when I'm always on camera. Let's just say ergonomics aren't great when you're trying to do this so you can see it. <laughs> All right.
can't remember if I grabbed a new blade or not. So I'm going to start cutting as well, just because of the angle I've got here. Okay. And there's a spot. I just snip my notches just a little bit like an eighth of an inch. If you're using a really uh, loose weave tweed, you might want to give yourself a little bit bigger notch. There's my notch here and here. All right. Again, my angle is totally off here. Next thing you know, I'm going to be getting on the table to be able to cut. <laughs> Let's see if that worked. Kind of. And be sure to snip your bust marks. Let's see. That one moved a little bit. I gotta make sure I got the right one there. All right, that should look that looks pretty good. So now I will cut this same piece over on that side over there by flipping it over. Way over there. Now, what do we always do? Let's check. I didn't even check to see which side's the right side, which side's the wrong side on this. Let me look at the sides. So this is the wrong side that's facing up. So I always put a little X, then I can I know exactly which one's the wrong side. So this is the side front piece. Now, if I decide to add inter to add lining, I will interface the hem and this section here. All right, one piece down. All right, I really am literally getting on the table. After I cut this piece, I'm going to walk you through the, the sleeves because I just, this angle is just too weird. And unless I literally stand in front of the camera, you're not going to be able to see this. If I was cutting miniature pieces of this, it might be easier, but that wouldn't be any fun. Then that's like doubling my work. By the way, I saw a couple of you post photos. I think uh, Barb O'Neill was one of them that posted photos of her jacket that she's working on. The way that she finished the inside with the bias trim was gorgeous. I'm just gonna keep cutting along that chalk mark. All right. It's called the aerobics of cutting. Now, some of you had asked earlier, what if you want this to be shorter? Remember, uh, you don't want the front to be quite as wide as what I have here. You would short, you could cut this the any width that you want. And this is your lapel. And whatever you shorten on lapel, you might want to shorten on the actual collar. All right, Let's see if I can squeeze under there. 
Okay. I know you all are laughing. Is it, do you go to the gym? No, I just cut fabric on my live shows. <laughs> it's a really good exercise routine. All right, there we go. And I know that I'm going to need to mark my pockets. I can do that later or now. I'll go ahead and do that later. For now, I'm going to mark that this is the wrong side. And we know that this is a front piece. So I've got one front and one back. I mean, one side front. And if I lay these together, look what happens. This plaid up here lines up beautifully. This part right here will line up. This part, all of these will line up beautifully. And in the front, the center front, I have a seam allowance, so it looks like I'm just going to have just this front two pieces right in the front. And if I have that on both sides, I'll have my trim going over that. It'll look beautiful. Okay. Front, side front. Now, I will flip the pattern pieces over and do the same thing here. The only thing you have to be careful of is make sure you count, if you're using this exact fabric, right into the center right here into the center of that tweed to mark that side as well. I can't just line it up here anywhere it fits and not consider that. So that will be the next marking about right there. I'll double check that and then the side front. All right. Once you have this cut, when you're looking at the sleeves, I'm just going to bring these up so you can see them. I want to just show you something. I'm going to cut these later and on a different table so you can actually see. This is the upper sleeve. So you have the upper and the under sleeve. So in the under sleeve, if you match that up with your underarm on your jacket, that's where the plaids will match up. All right. So we'll cut that in next week. I'm going to keep cutting all the jacket pieces out. We'll save the sleeve till later. I'm also going to cut out my lapel in the back, one out of fabric, one out of lining. On this, I think I'm just going to use, I've got a black uh, china silk I just purchased, and it's not very expensive, but it'll make a great way to finish the inside seams and also the lining underneath the lapel. On the lapel, I have an option, and I'll let you guys vote. So let me bring this over, and you guys vote on this. All right. I'm going to bring this. I'm going to step right here for a second. I could cut this right here going the same way as the entire pattern pieces. I could fold this in half and create a seam and cut one side on the bias this way and one side on the bias that way. So I have a question for you. Would you cut it just like the other pieces or would you add a little fun and cut it on the bias? That's my vote. So leave a vote. Cut it like the other pieces or bias. So just say, I don't know, regular or bias. And then I can go through and check out the votes for that. Hey, Michelle, <laughs> did you get your package? Did you get your fabulous package, by the way, Karina? I finally mailed your bag. I had I, I cried when I got rid of it, but I quit petting it, and I sent it to the actual winner. Yeah. Everybody's saying the bias. I'm thinking the bias would look cool, too. Okay, so on the bias, if I do the back on the bias, and then I have, let me bring this up. My chair is really low. If I do the back on the bias, and then I have all this beautiful trim that's black and navy that will match the fabric beautifully, I'm thinking I could either add trim to it or, now that might be too much. What I could do is on the long belt that goes around and then the sleeve things, I think I'm going to have that out of fabric on the straighter grain 
and add one layer of that lace over it. So the front trim that's all going to be lace is also going to be on the wristband and on the waistband to give it that little to tie the whole jacket together. I don't want to look like I just embroidered everything on the whole jacket, if you know what I mean. Boy, I think it's almost unanimous. <laughs> So I will wait and, and cut the bias and the sleeves next week. What I'm going to finish doing, not on camera, because I'm literally going to be climbing on the table. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cut the other front and the other side front, just like I showed you there. And then I will measure down from another row of those like little plaid things. Measure down, what did I have? Three and a half inches with my little panel. And that's where I'll line up my back piece. Okay. Cut the interfacing. Attach the interfacing where needed. I have to finish this embroidery, but it's probably going to take another three or four days because I overlapped the designs. So that means you have to keep changing thread. So every like two minutes, I run over to the machine. All right. Any questions for me before I draw a winner? Because I have to be back on Soy Machines Plus in about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Oh, gosh. You all said. Oh, Michelle got the purse. Hey, Karina. <laughs> I totally agree. She is so talented. Thanks, Arnell. I think it would be beautiful too. Jody, what about a little corner embroidery on the collar? It's a good idea. I do have a corner in that embroidery, if I remember correctly. There, get that off my glasses. <laughs> Karina, I told you I'd finally get rid of it. I, I did. It was hard. It was very hard. All right, any last minute questions before I let you all go? Okay, so again, the show's this week. I'm on Soy Machines Plus all week. So you can catch me over there tomorrow, Friday. Uh, Monday at 2 is the Fabric Stash Sale. So download the Anjou of Patterns app. And I've got a lot of fabric for you. Those that are going to be in the class, you're going to get an email. I'm going to give you a quick video of what's here to give you first dibs on the fabrics because you need them for class. These are a lot of the fabrics that will also be used in the classes in January. I would love to know uh, who's going to be joining. Uh, we've got to Road to California in January, Puyallup, and... Um, and then some very exciting things coming the beginning of the year, which you kind of got a little hint about, a new sewing reality show. Uh, you'll just have to stay tuned for that. That's something you all will be able to watch for free, which will be fantastic. All right, so let's draw a winner to our fabulous lace. Let's go over here and see what the lace is doing. Let's run it one more time. Uh, Joanna, you find the SMP show, if you go to soymachinesplus.com, it's right on their main website, but you can watch it on Facebook and YouTube. And they do giveaways twice a day. And at the end of the day, if you make a comment, you might be like Xena and be one of the one of the winners. All right, so we're gonna keep that going. I know. <laughs> Ton of people on YouTube today instead versus uh, Facebook, which is unusual. Oh, Joanna, you could do it. You'd be able to do it. Michelle, she says bias. Lou says bias. I'm thinking bias too. Oh, Mary, don't be chicken. It would be, she says regular. Okay, I'll cut it on the bias with you guys because there is a trick to that. You can't just take both pieces and cut them this way. They actually have to go this way or this way, one or the other. So I usually chalk it in first and make sure because I have many, 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 many times cut it the wrong way. I know. It's hard to believe, but I actually have. And I would totally uh, own up to it. In fact, one jacket, I cut the sleeves. I cut the underarm sleeve on the bias and the upper one on the straight of grain. Ooh, that might look cool out of this. But I'll tell you what. I did it wrong hmm, three times. I wasted three cutouts, three pieces of fabric. Yeah, not cool. Okay, so who would like to win Touch Up Couture Collection 2 Embroidery Designs? I'd love to see what's going to happen with all of this. I did say Puyallup, Mary. I know I did, yes. So that was just decided last week, and you can thank our buddy Jeff from Kai Scissors for that. He's bringing me out to Puyallup. 
And there's, oh, Lorraine, I totally forgot to email you back. I'm sorry. She's going to be there for two classes. I think I was so excited, I just forgot to reply. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. Yep, they're on YouTube. And what I can try to do is put a link so you guys can see it. All right, winner, winner. And this could be worldwide uh, because it's a downloadable. So if you win, oh, Karina, you forgot to enter the giveaway. <laughs> Do you have these designs anyways already? I can't remember. All right, so if you have already have Touch of Couture Collection 2 and you'd rather have number one, that's totally fine. You just say, hey, switch it up. So you need to email me, info at AngelaWolf.com when you get this. You could also message me on Facebook, but email's much faster. Uh, they're all working now. Oh, two months of total chaos, but they are working. All right, so the winner is, let's see who this is. You get an extra entry if you shared it with winners. All right, and I forgot to ask where everybody's from, so I don't even know where this person's from. <laughs> oh, Charlotte, you're gonna be in California too, yay. Well, I might have to do another giveaway if you all forgot about it, but all right, here we go. For now, the winner is Muriel Poyer. P Poyer. Poyer. Oh, shoot. Tell me I didn't botch your last name. Muriel, beautiful name. Poyer. Poyer. That, I know it's something like probably beautiful French or something, and I'm totally screwing it up. All right, Muriel. Congratulations. Woo! Uh, very excited for you. Just send me a quick message. <laughs> Everybody say me, please. So congratulations, that is the design collection. And I sent it out in the email like a few days ago if you guys missed it, all right? It was a link in the email. I know there was a lot of photos in there, like our flat tire, did you see that? <laughs> that was in the email too. Okay, so Fashion Sewing Club. I have some surprises for you coming up next week. Just stay tuned for your email, everyone else. Fabric stash sale at 2 on Monday, 2 Eastern, which is 1, 12, 11 your time. All right, guys, I got to go. I'm going to be on Sewing Machines Plus uh, for a lot of the afternoon until 5 my time. And tomorrow and Thursday, too, an all-day live show with Blaine. Jane's on there. We've got a ton of great people. Joanne was on there. Cindy's on there. A lot of my favorite sewing friends. So hop on over. Blaine has a ton of great deals and a ton of good giveaways. And I will see you next time. If you have any questions, you can always leave them. Send me an email or send me a message. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.